Well, the Astros have an off day today in New York City. And what do you know? Ryan Stanek opens up his Instagram and he gets a message from H. John Wheelhouse and Locked on Astros. And we want to talk Astros baseball. He was kind enough to take time out of his day to grant us an interview. What a heavyweight series we just got through watching. We're going to talk about the Yankees Astros. We're going to talk about where he sees the team going forward, the culture in the bullpen, just what he loves about Houston, Texas, and the Houston Astros fan base. So sit back and enjoy this awesome, amazing surprise interview with Ryan Stanley. Hello and welcome to Locked On Astros, your daily Astros podcast. Here are your hosts, Eric the Man Heisman and Brett H-Town Wheelhouse Chansey. We are Locked On Houston Astros and we are your daily Astros podcast. I'm H-Town Wheelhouse. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at H-Town Wheelhouse. You can find the show at Locked on Astros on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Always positive, always Stros. I've got Ryan Stanek here, relief pitcher for the Houston Astros. I call you Stanek causing panic because of how well you've done this year. Ryan, tell the people where they can find you on Twitter. Uh, Rstanek underscore 55. I'm on uh, Instagram and Twitter. Yeah, just kind of pretty basic. (laughs) Awesome. Now, you know, um, what a series. Um, I want to I want to talk about the Yankees Astros series. But I also before we do that, I want to I want to talk about you because um, the Astros, you guys are killing it this year. I mean, you you've got a massive lead in the AL West. You're considered one of the top two teams in the AL, one of the best teams in baseball. And a lot of that is due to your pitching, not only your starters, but the relief core. What has what is the buzz right now amongst the relief pitchers this year with how y'all been doing? I mean, we just have a lot of guys that that take the ball really regularly. We just have guys that have been in the zone, been attacking hitters, like kind of trusting in the game plans and the prep that we do going into series. Is so like I don't know. I feel like a lot of guys have thrown the ball, and everybody just wants to pass the the next guy. Like, and it's kind of like competing with your, your, your boys to like, like to do it. I think at that point, like, I think everybody's kind of pushed it, everybody to be a little bit, a little bit better each day. So it's been pretty special. So, I mean, you've been here a while now. I mean, you're, you're really one of the, you're one of the key pieces in this bullpen. Um, you came over, I mean, you're a flamethrower. Gosh, you hit hundos, you know, and people love to see that on the, on the clock, when you're getting prepared for a game, do you prepare the same way for every game, or is it different when you're, you know, it's a home game, y'all won the game before, you know, like, what is your preparation like from game to game? I mean, you pretty much have to keep it the same, because, I mean, as a reliever, you don't, you don't know, like, when you're going to pitch, so you get to the point where you're like, well, I can't make any wholesale changes to my routine because like I might pitch, I might not pitch. You don't know. So you kind of, you kind of just pick days that you're going to lift. You pick days that you're, that you're going to run more or less kind of based on how your body feels. You just kind of, you kind of play it all by ear while doing most of the same like prep every day, whether it be bands or running or core or whatever your stretching routine and whatever your prep work may be. Like you just, kind of fall in line to that every day and then if you have to lift or do whatever you can do that like before the game starts or after the game if that's what you what you like to do yeah and i know you guys are all about routine (laughs) we were um i recently went i was at um at the space cowboys game when um when uh, jake had his first uh start on the mound and before the game some some autograph guy was like, hey, sign my ball, sign my ball. And I'm like, okay, rule number one, if he's a starting pitcher, you never talk to him on the day of the start, right? Like there are these unwritten rules, you know, and I mean, he was fanatical. He wouldn't mean anything by it. But the preparation for starters and preparation for relief pitchers is different. When you were growing up, you know, playing baseball, um, when did you realize that relief pitching was – your forte or did that get figured out and ironed out once you hit the major leagues? Oh, I was a starter until I got to AAA. So like I was 
I was a pretty good starter, and then I actually was told basically that my quickest route to the big leagues would be into the bullpen, and like I got converted to being a reliever, and then I got called up the next year, and then like I threw pretty well, so I just kind of stuck in the bullpen, and they never, never like went back. So it's just kind of one of those things where my stuff profiled in the bullpen, and there was a need for guys in the bullpen at that time so it just kind of like fell into like my my I guess career path at that point you know that and that really goes along with what I've heard um I've I've had the honor of um interviewing we've interviewed Lance McCullers before um I've had Pete Solomon on Brendan B. Lack several guys that you know um Enders B um guys that are down at Corpus guys that are Sugarland, and a lot of those guys that are still in the minors haven't made it to the pros yet they were like look I, I want to be a starter. I feel like I'm a starter. But if my place in the big league squad is in the bullpen, put me in the bullpen because I would rather be a major league reliever than a minor league starter. And, you know, because, you know, those guys never know. Um, what's it like for you guys this year? It, it, it seems like, you know, dealing with the injury with Lance McCullers, dealing with the injury of Oda Rizzi, when the starters maybe start going down like that, does that put any more pressure on you guys in the bullpen or do you guys just work the same, no matter who's up, no matter who's going? I mean, yeah, like, no, you can't really. Question was you guys as relief pitchers, when you have starters go down, like, you know, you have Lance on the shelf, hopefully coming back soon. Odor is he coming back soon? But when those guys go down, does it put more pressure on the relief pitchers when they're having to juggle starters or having to, move around the starts. I mean, do you guys think about that stuff or are those things out of your control you don't even worry about? I mean, they're not really in our control unless it's one of our relievers that is going to go into the rotation like like, uh, Javi did um, when Odie got hurt. So, like, unless it's somebody like that, it really doesn't – I mean, it might affect us a little bit, like, if whoever maybe – hasn't gone deep into games before like if he's building up he's going four or five innings we go oh okay well we've got to be able to like cover four or five today Uh, besides like the length and in coverage it doesn't really ever change because i mean you expect the game to be close you expect yourself to pitch in and whatever in the situations that you've kind of um been in so it just kind of gets to the point where you just kind of move on with your day, no matter who's on the mound. Like, obviously, like, you, like, watch games and know know who's, uh, like, who's on the mound, so who can maybe get you deeper than others. But, yeah. No, yeah, definitely. And I know um, I saw recently, I believe it was, uh, was it was it Maton that bought you all the uh, coffee maker? I know um, you talked about that. Um, how, you know... Being in the bullpen, sitting in there for innings, you know, um, I'm assuming you don't really start getting prepared to start looking at things or start thinking about things until you get towards maybe middle innings. But how tough is it for a reliever, like when Nerys and Presley came in, to get that three-man save? Is there an extra amount of pressure on those relief pitchers to carry that no-hitter? Because, you know, Javier was tanked. I mean, he was at a whole, what, 110, 100-something pitches. 115. 115. Okay. Yeah. So like, I mean, everybody in the bullpen, whoever's available is probably going, Oh crap. Well, gosh, if I go in, I hope I don't screw it up. I mean, what is, what is the mentality of a relief pitcher in that situation? I mean, you, you, you go in and execute your game plan. Like there's, there's no difference. Like you never want to give up hits when you're pitching regardless of a no hitter. So I think your approach is going to be the exact same. Like, or at least mine would, it'd be like, all right, well, where 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 does the report show that like I should go? Where where does my strength tell me that I should go? And kind of mesh those two thoughts together and 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 move on. And you just attack the way that you would attack any other any other time. 
Exactly. And I want to take a second because I know that a lot of people are betting on you guys getting back to the World Series. I mean, if you talk to 10 out of 10 Astros fans, they're like, of course, we're the favorite. But I mean, you guys have proved it on and off the field with the way the culture y'all created. But what I want to talk about today is BetOnline.net. It's the number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. Find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, news, including this year's NHL playoffs and Major League Baseball. BetOnline is your continued source for all your sport wagering information. Information, including live betting, esports, and scores. BetOnline.net remains the best spot for all your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. BetOnline.net is the fastest and easiest way to check out your favorite sports, MMA, boxing, even golf. I mean, even the Tiger Woods isn't really golfing. I mean, you can still bet on it, right? They got like two different tours now. I mean, it's kind of chaotic right now in the golf world. So go check it out. Head to the website today. Or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. BetOnline, where the game starts. So, Ryan, I want to ask you a non-pitching question, Astros related, because the topic du jour when you guys play the Yankees is Jose Altuve. As all the memes that are out there, you know, they, they, they're saying Yankee Stadium is the house that Altuve built. He owns the Yankees. You know, all the all these things, all this talk. Right. What is it like in the clubhouse? Like, do. Are, are those things that are that are talked about amongst y'all, are those things, or is that more for the fans and for the commentators? And you guys are like, hey, we're just baseball players. We're just here to play. Like, do y'all take away that noise and just remove it so you can focus on the game? Yeah, pretty much. You just, you just go about your day and you concern yourself with who's on the mound or who's in the box or whatever, whatever is going on. Like, yeah, sometimes you might see it and, like, you see something like any kind of meme or whatever and you might get a chuckle and then you're like, all right, just back to back to what we're doing. Like, I think it's a lot of stuff that, that external sources and, and external people like outside of the clubhouse and outside of the organizations like pay attention to, but like not so much, like if you're involved. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, and that makes sense because you guys have a long season, 162 games. I mean, it is a grind day in and day out. You're, you're on the road. Um, you're away from your family. How, how has that been for you? I know you've got, you've got little ones at home. How has that been for you being away? Is, is it, is it tough? Do you, do you just kind of get used to it? It's, it becomes part of the territory, the more veteran you get, or is it always something you're always like, man, I can't wait to get back. It's, both if that makes it very much like you get kind of numb to it as you've played longer and longer but like obviously like i'm a new dad as of uh last september so like it's been harder this year on the road especially because we've had a bunch of long three city trips and stuff like that so like it's been hard like harder for me just because i'm like i want to be at home like good i'm late um but like you get used to it and like they try to come when they can and it's just kind of stuff that like you adjust as you go and you try to like make sure you spend as much like quality time with them when you're home and if they come on the road and do do all the stuff that you can so you just kind of you just kind of deal with it it's it's not yeah. always easy you're always you're always gone so um yeah it just makes the time that you're actually like together like better because what, from what I understand, just uh, having former students of mine that made it to the pros, having friends um, that that are you know know people that have been professional ball players. Like, what's funny is when baseball games aren't happening, guys like myself, podcasters or journalists, or whatever, MLB Network, we talk about baseball. You guys don't sit around and talk about launch angles and metrics and velocity. I mean, you do that with your coaches. But it's really more just like you guys are people outside of the game. Um, what is your favorite aspect of being with this team on the road? Who are your favorite players to hang up, hang out with, and you know, chop it up with when you guys are traveling? I mean, it varies a lot, but like, like typically for me, like my 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 friends that I hang out with the most are obviously relievers because we spend so much time in game with them. So it's like you just hang out with those guys all the time in game. And then you kind of end up hanging out with them off the field. Like we kind of hang out with everybody and like 
starter like pitchers i feel like pitchers tend to kind of like hang out with pitchers a little bit more just because like it just happens that way for whatever reason um but yeah people have people kind of like co co-mingle in the position players and pitchers like fairly regularly so it's it's fun. You get a good mix of mix of the guys that that like to hang out with each other. So it's kind of like when you're in a rock band. You know, I had a uh, I have a friend who has a tribute band, and um, he's actually the drummer. It's a it's a Blink 182 tribute band. They're called Blink 281, <laughs> and they always give him a hard time. They're like, oh yeah, the drummer always thinks he's like the lead guy, and he's really not. He's always in the back, and and you know, but we just let him hang out with us to feel cool. Um, I, I saw a little thing um, on one of your former teammates, Zach Grinke. Um, Zach Grinke uh, had a fan uh, reach out with a pen and a ball, and he asked Zach Grinke to sign it. And Zach Grinke, like, took the ball and threw it, like, chunked it. I, I guess it's a joke. I and the, did you that see that? Weird. And I was like, that is weird. Do you have any interesting stories just about him or just 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 anything that you could share with us, just fun interactions you've had with maybe JB or McCullers or just something that you might tell us that we wouldn't know unless we were there in the clubhouse. Of course, we don't want anything personal. Just um, I know Lance shared a fun story with us when he was talking about his four seat with the, with uh, Grinky. And he said, uh, hey, Zach, um, I can't figure out my I, I, I can't figure this pitch out. What do I do? He was like, don't throw it. It's terrible. Like, you can't throw it well. So he's like, so I stopped. And, you know, so, I mean, any anything like that you can kind of, you know, pull from the back part of your mind to share? Um, I mean, Grinky is – he's definitely one of a kind. He's he he's one of my favorite teammates that I played with because he is definitely one of the most interesting dudes in baseball for sure. Um, man, I don't – I don't know. I think I think it's just funny the way he interacts with people. I, I like overall because he's so dry and so honest at all times that like I feel like you could make anything he says kind of into a story, but it's all furious and kind of sincere and like direct that like it would catch people off guard. But I don't know. I can't think of anything like directly off the top of my head that like would make a good story but he is he's awesome he really is oh actually there was a picture going around in spring training when zach took the picture of the dude in spring training Mm -hmm. and the dude had long hair and a beard and he sent it to me and goes hey look i found your brother it's pre-game he's about to throw his game like his warm-ups on the like in in the bullpen mound to go out to pitch and he somehow for whatever reason like took a picture and sent it and it ended up going like viral because Zach asked to take a picture of the guy. <laughs> and it was just, it was just funny. Cause it was like, I saw that Zach text me. I go, Oh, this is going to be good. And I looked at it and I was like, got me. He got me. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's funny. I had a, I had a good friend of mine, like, like call me one day and like, I hadn't talked to this guy in like, it, you know, in a few months. And he said, hey, are you, are you in Philadelphia? And I said, uh, no, dude, I'm, I'm in Houston. He's like, whoa, he is a, I'm going to send you a picture. Takes a picture of a guy um, at the at the Phillies game wearing an Astros uniform, has the same facial hair. I mean, you know, I guess, you know, I'm your middle, middle 40s white guy with facial hair. We all kind of look the same. But, I mean, the guy looked – I mean, he I, I could have mistaken him for me if I would have seen it. I was just like, you know, that's hilarious. Um, a couple more things I want to hit on before we go. I want to ask you about JV. I want to ask you about, um, you know, um, the year that Jordan Alvarez is having. But Justin Verlander coming back, I mean, he has been absolutely astounding on the mound. Um, how important is it to have his veteran leadership and his presence in the clubhouse and to come back and to do as well as he's doing? Oh, I mean, he's he's a machine. He's very regimented, very prepared, very studious of his craft. Like there's a reason why he's as good as he is, is like, is he very much takes it serious at all times, wants to improve himself at all times, wants to be the best version of himself at all times. So he's all working and learning and studying and planning and like on top of his, his craft, which is, 
so very impressive because it's not something he like just started either. He's been doing this for years and just to see him do his who do his thing day in and day out is is special. He's like there's a reason why he's been as good as he's been. Oh yeah, I mean you can tell his his work ethic is second to none. Before we get to Jeremy Pena, I want to ask you about you, okay? To me, myself and Eric, we've talked a lot about, you know, we love how we get to vote. I think sometimes the All Star Games a little bit of a popularity contest. I tried to be objective. Um, I mean, I hate to admit to an Astros player, I don't have all Astros on my ballot, but I definitely have the ones that I feel like are most deserving. You're having an All Star year, I think. You have been absolutely phenomenal. I mean, you you, you have done a great job. What has been the key to your success this year? Have you done something different in preparation? I know the last couple of years have been a little wonky, a little, is it just getting back to the more regular schedule and a full season rather than everything being interrupted? I mean, probably that and a little bit of health and whatever, because like I had a really good year in 18. I had a really good start to the year in 19 until I got hurt. And then I got traded off in, in 19. So I was banged up and I was, and then I was traded and banged up. So, and then I tried to like come back from being banged up and try to like rush my way back a little bit because I wanted to play and like prove myself on a new team and all that. And like didn't perform up to the level that like I wanted to obviously. And then I uh, got to be a free agent and came into Houston was like, was actually healthy got a full off season to kind of do my thing and, and refine some things and get back into what I needed to do, be the better version of myself. And I came here, was ready, trained well, and then had a, pr- a pretty good year last year. And I feel like it just kind of like has carried over into this season, I guess. I don't, I don't think I've really changed anything though. I, I, have a similar mindset, similar plan stuff. I feel like is pretty similar. Like I just, I don't know, it's just working out right now. I feel like, I feel like it's sometimes in the bullpen. It's, it's kind of fickle because you make good pitches and give up some runs and you make some bad pitches and get outs. Like it's not always uh, the steadiest um, journey when you're in the bullpen. A lot of the time I feel like. Right. It, I mean, I mean, I mean, really, um, I mean, gosh, I'm sitting here looking at your numbers, 0.71 ERA, 25 innings pitched. Um, I mean, uh, 28 strikeouts. I mean, the whip of 0.99, just a phenomenal year. I, you know, we we wish you continued success. And um, I know there's we won't even get into trade deadline talk because that'd be like a whole nother show. And I know that's that's like, quote unquote, above your pay grade. You let James click and. Dusty Baker, the guys worry about that stuff. But Jeremy Pena, um, how impressive has it been for this kid to come in? Because he had big shoes to fill. He he's he's replacing a guy that the city had endeared themselves to that had become a postseason icon that a lot of people, including myself, didn't think that he would leave Houston. And he's gone. And then Jeremy Pena, one of his first interviews in spring training, says, I'm not here to replace anybody. I'm here to be Jeremy Pena. How impressive has this kid been since he's gotten here? Oh, tremendously so. He's been very professional, very, very much like put his nose to the grindstone and get to work kind of kid. Like he's been very, very, uh, very pro since he's been in the clubhouse, which like I feel like as a young kid, that's as good of a compliment. Like obviously he's a tremendous baseball player. Like he's very talented. Like he's got a great skill set, but he's got a really good head on his shoulders and knows what it takes coming in to like really put himself in a good position to be successful as himself. And yeah, like you come in after a guy like Carlos, who's been so special and is a great player and was special to the city. It's not easy. It's definitely not easy. There's a lot of pressure there, but like realistically him wanting to be the best version of himself is the only way to look at it. You have to go in and be very sure of yourself and play like you. You can't go out and try to be something you're not. You can't try to be someone you're not. Just be you. Feel feel confident in yourself. And then 
good things tend to happen because you stay in your lane and and just work. Awesome. You know, thank you so much. And before we go, um, just in a parting word, maybe because I know we get a lot of, we actually have kind of a, uh, we have a wide range of uh, people who watch our show. We really pride ourselves ourself on being family friendly. Both Eric and I are teachers by day. Um, so I know we have a ton of young ball players that that watch our show, that watch the player interviews. I mean, what is maybe one thing you would tell an aspiring baseball player? Like, what do they what do they need to focus on? What is what do they need to worry about the most as they're growing up and trying to get to the next level wherever they are? I that's that's a tough one. That's because there's so many things. I I think the just instilling the value of just just putting in the time. It's so baseball is such a hard game. And it takes so much time to get good and improve and create good habits and do all those things. It just takes time and the effort. And, like, to get there, a lot of the times, like, you can overcome a lot of physical shortcomings talent-wise with work. Granted, obviously, talent with work ethic, obviously, is exception. You know what I mean? So that that is that is that but just just go out there and put in the time like love like if you love the game and you love playing just go out there and and play hard and have and have fun i mean especially at a, at a young age like you got to enjoy the game and it's it's really hard to be good at something that you hate so try to That's find true. Something you love and then it's not work at that point. It doesn't feel like work. I like I loved playing as a kid and I loved to hit and I loved to feel. I loved I love to do the whole thing. I love to play every aspect of the game. So spending a couple hours a night doing baseball activities was fun. Like even even if it was like hard. Like that I enjoyed it. So like I think that's something is find 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 what you love and find what you want to do. And then it's not, it's not hard to do the work. Exactly. And I heard a quote that I'm actually sharing with my son, my son's 13, about to go into high school, you know, I'm trying out, trying to um, hopefully make his high school team at some point. And I told him, I said, don't be upset at the results you get or at the results you don't get for the work you didn't put in. Like if you don't put in the work, you're not going to get the results. But if you put in the work, you're going to get the results. So, you know, that is all for us. We're, we're, um, we're here close to 30 minutes, Brian. I really appreciate it. Like it means a ton to us that you would take time out of your day in the big city of New York, um, to just chill out and hang out with me. And, um, I really hope that you come back to the show. Um, we'd love to have you anytime and put a good word in, in with us for the guys and Hey, we would love for all the Astros to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, we are at Locked On Astros on YouTube. You can find us on Apple, Google, Spotify, or the Odyssey app, wherever you get your podcasts. If you're listening to us, if you haven't subscribed, please do that. We're part of the Locked On Network, 200 plus channels. Your favorite major league team, we got a show for you. So for myself and Ryan Stanek um, with the Houston Astros, y'all have a good one and go Strokes. Thank you. <laughs>